Hey, yo. So I wanted to take some time here to share with you guys some information on a cause that's near and dear to me. I assume most of you who listen to this show are familiar with the work of John Anthony West, the man who, along with Dr. Robert Schock, put forth the hypothesis in the early 90s that the Great Sphinx of Giza, Egypt, showed evidence of weathering brought on by prolonged and extensive rainfall. This is significant because that hypothesis, as one might expect, is not in line with the mainstream history history of the Sphinx that most Egyptologists subscribe to. In fact, West and Schock's Sphinx erosion hypothesis predates the widely accepted account that the Sphinx, along with the Second Pyramid at Giza, was built by Egyptian pharaohs around 2500 BC. Now, we're not going to get into all that right now, although I would love to some other time. Instead, the point of this recording is to shed some light on the personal life of a John Anthony West as it stands in this moment. John was recently diagnosed with cancer and is currently fighting for his life. He's 85 years old, so you really don't know how much time someone at that age has left regardless of disease. Either way, the man has made such an impact on people who are into esoterica of any sort. John spent the last few decades raging against the quackademics, the prostitutes, the Church of Progress, and those people still living in dumb fuckistan. He's helped enlighten many, many people as it relates to our occulted history. Because of that impact, and because John has much business left unfinished, there's a number of people rallying around him to help him in his battle. One of those people who has been helping raise awareness and funds for John's battle is joining me here now. His name is Chris George Zuger, aka Mr. Scotchalot. Chris has helped put together a couple telethons that were broadcast live on Den of Lore, his live streaming YouTube show slash podcast. Do you call it a podcast? I always think of it as a YouTube show, but I'm not really sure what exactly you are. Well, Mr. Scotchalot is just the, 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 the joke name I just gave you, <laughs> and if would only really refer to myself after uh, several drams on the show uh what are we oh god <laughs> um wait 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 what aren't you we are not an average podcast and the thing is like this is one of the reasons i love your show just because it's it's quick and it's short and it gets all the stuff in there i can't go any i i can't do a show under three hours like it's hard for me to do a show under three hours so what what are we um it's an excuse for me to drink on a weeknight and learn cool shit that's you know that that's the whole thing we we basically do the the same thing that coast to coast or uh fade to black does but with no commercials lots of alcohol tons of swearing and uh you know very interesting guests and topics that we don't plan for we just we just go we do we just have a good time and uh been doing that for about a year uh, i actually stumbled across your podcast about two and a half weeks ago and uh, that i believe you were, you were who was it that you were interviewing at the time um, let's see. So, Greg Stewart, maybe? Oh, one second. Uh, info, info. Give me info. Oh, that. This is another thing. It, it helps to actually be somewhat prepared for this <laughs> and for every show, because I can guarantee you the amount of times I've had to go, like, I've, I've run into the studio or we've started 15 minutes late um, because I've just been cutting things right down to the wire. Yeah. Um, it, it's always a good idea to be on time or at least to try and prepare yourself. In terms of like assets and you know some basic notes yeah i do find that to be sort of beneficial but i do kind of like your style because it see i i probably over prepare for most of my guests i wish i could be more sort of loose and spontaneous and i mean i am somewhat like i don't script myself or like structure the interview in a certain way just kind of i just have notes and talking points and questions you know but you seem like you really just sort of i don't want to say it's like you know by the seat of your pants type of stuff but it does seem that you're just very loose about it and and almost just totally just going spontaneously through it well it is by the seat of my pants um i haven't actually prepared a show outline uh and that was me just grabbing a grabbing a quick glass I've, I've, I've had like a really long fucking couple of days so please do excuse me it is scotch is always welcome here i don't necessarily drink on the show but i am fond of a good scotch myself well uh we're starting to get into the the lean months so I'm, i've moved to mcclellan's which is not bad except i picked up the islay and not the um, um not the space side so it's a little more peaty not as smooth but it gets the job done yeah no we, we do have like i do everything on the fly like I have a basic understanding. The guests that I invite on the show, because like I, I've listened to podcasts and radio shows for a long time. Um, you know, started with just listening coast to coast AM when I was younger. I listened to that almost every single night. Uh, when Art Bell was on, I 
tried to pick up his style and learn how he did it and how he asked questions and how he crafted his shows. Um, and then, you know, listen to George Norrie after that. And then Jimmy Church from there, like Jimmy was probably the, the big inspiration for me to actually get into podcasting uh, just just because like he started exactly as I'm doing now. He just started in a, a you know, in an office or, you know, spare bedroom in his house. And uh, he knows uh, his, his significant other is his partner in crime, um, uh, Rita, who is, has been producing the show for, for a very long time. And the entire team there has grown, you know, steadily for over the last like four years. So I'm like, you know, what, if Jimmy can do it, then, you know, sure as hell I'm going to. And uh, listen to Grimerica for a very long time as well. Um I haven't had much of an opportunity to be able to catch them in the last, let's say, six months to a year or so, but I'd say about six months. But, like, it's all these guys, I, t- I took, you know, inspiration from all of them in terms of how to be able to put the show together. And this entire th- process, and, you know, like, I used to plan them out. I would spend hours and hours and hours researching, and, and the thing is, I already knew all this stuff. Um, I, I'm a 32nd degree Freemason. I'm, you know, have studied uh, symbolism and, um, you know, being able to interpret context or um, meaning out of shape and form uh, from my own ex- experience and uh, time in advertising and branding and you know it's it's like okay well if, if you can think quickly on your feet doing this stuff and if you just you know you just have your mind going a, a mile a minute or at least if you're just enough of a smart ass um, and you know <laughs> You can usually keep up with it. I'm, I'm essentially trying. I'm, I'm do the show with the tools that used to get me in trouble with my mom when I was, you know, a kid. It used to get me smacked upside the head. But the entire thing that is going on now, and the entire process that we're doing, is to just have fun with it, just like you are. You know, stick with stick with the top, stick with topics you love, stick with people you want to be able to talk to that you find interesting, and just just go to town. Um, if you really love something, you should be able to talk for three, four hours on it. You know, it, it's it's also a good thing to kind of mix things up. You usually, you've got an opening segment, and and uh, then you've got your main. You know, I, I, try, I try and bookend the the main interview with like an opening and closing segment. And that entire process started with one particular program, and it wasn't even a podcast. It was uh, Mystery of the Sphinx by John Anthony West. And when that was released back in the mid '90s, somewhere around the mid '90s, and this was this was back when John still had that Silver Fox. Well, he still has the Silver Fox thing going on, but, you know, when he had that Silver Fox, I'm I'm uh, going to jump on a horse and ride through a scene like he did in that show. That that entire show blew my mind open because it was the first time I'd ever questioned what was actually given to us as fact with regards to history. And my mom made me watch that show when I was younger. I had no interest in it at the time. I, I you know, cared about playing Super Nintendo and, and playing baseball. And that was basically about it at that time. But my mother loved Charlton Heston. And he was the narrator for that for that show. And, um, you know, I've I've been following John's work for 20, 90, uh, about 22, 23 years. And when I found out at the beginning of 2017 that John Anthony West had uh, come down, or at least had be hit, hit, come down with, it had been developing for some time, obviously, but, you know, he was diagnosed with stage four cancer of, you know, the, the, the brain, lungs, liver, I believe is, is um, you know, so it started somewhere and it metastasized and it had gone to such a degree that he his prospects were that were given to him weren't exactly the best. And on top of that, because his immune system had been, you know, fighting off the the cancer, or at least trying to fight off the cancer. He was also suffering from pneumonia. Uh, you you can if you go back to the um, did you listen to Joe Rogan Experience? Oh yeah, yeah for sure. Go go, go back and listen to the the last uh, John Anthony West episode. It was it last year sometime? I think it was at the beginning of Jan or b- beginning of December. Right. So like just yeah. around, like just around the holidays, and you can you know you can hear in between uh, like in between sentences he would be breathing, and you you could hear the the labor breathing through the microphone. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm listening to this. I'm like, okay, well, you know, like, well, he's 85 years old. It's, uh, not uncommon for, for 85 year old, for, for, for any gentleman or, or a woman of that age to, you know, have, have, have weird things happening with their body, you know, creaks, groans, what have you. So, uh, you know, I chalked it up to, well, he's, he's been climbing over ruins in Egypt two, three times a year for the last goodness knows how long. Well, that's going to take a toll on anybody. Then I found out he had cancer and, and that, you know, things weren't going well, and I, you know, waited around, and I think it was actually announced on on Joe Rogan that he, that he was um, that he was diagnosed. I'm I'm pretty sure I have I haven't gone back to listen to that episode, but I, you know, just basically said, okay, well, who's going to do something? Who who's going to, uh, you know, anybody, anybody? He has his family and 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 Clay Roop, who um, had been moved had moved back from, uh, you know, from East Asia. 
a couple of months beforehand and he'd been helping him out around the house and he'd been helping him out with with um, the diagnosis in, ter- in terms of changing his diet and and trying to address the uh, you know imbalances with with what was actually going into his body so that he could his body could then fight um, you know fight the cancer itself but even for him you know he's one guy and you know, there's only so much that one guy can do as valiant as it is and like sometimes you know even even the strongest of heroes and even the most stubborn of uh <laughs> stubborn of of um uh, crusaders against willful ignorance or egotistical academia you know e- even like the mightiest of heroes can stumble and it's like okay well you know many hands make light work and you know you, you know if you can possibly make a dis- difference or if you can do something if you can inspire other people or if you know if you can help bring some type of light to a subject that is i'm, I'm gonna say you know it, it, it's 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 a very big tragedy if what would have befallen him and knowing knowing that he'd had a family and knowing that he'd had you know a wife two kids and all these people who are counting on him, all these people who look up to him it's like okay let's let's see who we can get you know like we by by we i mean well we ever, ever anybody who has ever been involved uh has been going with this for a while you know, when it came to John Anthony West, when he was diagnosed with cancer, he and um, uh, Graham Hancock actually had uh, sat down and discussed, uh, uh, you know, over telephone that and I think it was like early January at the time. And uh, John had wanted to, um, you know, he'd wanted to to take his uh, interview with with Graham Hancock, uh, which I think was done in New York at the time. Uh, you know, it, it's the one basically like where where it's just Graham and John just sitting down on a stage. And, you know, Graham had suggested the doing like a, a crowdfunding for his treatment. Uh, you know, it's a lot better than, than monetizing it, be, you know, because even for myself, <laughs> having having uh, started like just small little snippets of segments, you get a couple hundred views at a time. It's like 14 cents. It's not it's not very much. And, you know, the amount was very large. And Clay had joined in the fray at that or somewhere around that point And with, you know, worked with with John off of that suggestion and kind of took it from there. Uh, I know that's within the span of that time somewhere around there that it might have been before it might have been after i'd have to double check exact the exact date of that of that joe rogan uh experience uh podcast but you know like john and joe had done a full interview it was the first time john anthony west had actually been in the studio for for joe rogan experience and you know it was i think it maybe it was like a month after just because that, that that christmas really was really crazy <clears throat> and at that point you know that's where i'd heard about the fundly and i think it was actually through john anthony west's page and you know like i'd i'd like i did i did my part I'm like like well, john anthony west is sick i donated my 20 bucks and you know that was about it and um you know i, I kind of waited around for a while to to see what else was going on just because like J- john's been a, a, a big influence on my life and a lot of other people uh having been like the guy who started this whole alternative history kick um, i say kick but <laughs> like essentially the 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 entire process of questioning where recorded history is coming from and I think at that same time I'd like started talking with uh, Cameron Wiltshire, Astromonk from Sacred Geometry International, and he's one of the the hardest working guys and one of the nicest people I've ever met. He works with Randall Carlson, who's also a Freemason as I am. Uh, he and I have been talking back and forth over Facebook a lot. We have a, a very we have very similar views on a lot of stuff and outlook to the world, and you know interest in in uh, the esoteric and occult works. And we both have dedication to trying to make the world a better place. And we said, well, what is it we what like what is it we can do? What what can we do to help things along and and see if we can get some much needed funds for his cancer treatment let's uh, let's start a uh, you know he's got a fundly we got to make sure that it's actually credible why not just do you know do a fundraiser and get some like even even if we're not actually involved just get some lines on it and that's how cameron got in touch and and started getting in contact with clay and we'd started the entire process while clay was getting caught up with everything because he, he'd been going back and forth and he'd been running off off of his feet to to help john anthony so we started the process until clay's like yep yeah, okay i'm in we're good what are we going to do and we just kind of you know brought things from there uh, at the same time uh magic egypt started doing their fundraising that I, I think it might have started about like before we had started ours and i started getting to know venice and i'd seen that she had you know actually posted uh, the information for for the telethon and i'm i'm like okay well this is something that's a little bit different than your average you know than, than your average fundraiser like you know that's when i started to notice that it's like john anthony west was is a, is a strikingly large figure in this field but he's he's touched so many lives and he he's he's known known so many people that you know the the prospect of of him 
being sick and and you know having to to fight this it's like you just see the the, the nature of people when they start coming out like again you know graham's been a a big friend of of john anthony west for decades and i know that when graham's pushing something out based on you know helping somebody out like he, he's lending you know like half a million people to his to, to, who, who listen to any of his posts if, if it's posted they'll look at it and you know he he posted that out and he's like okay well let's you know this is uh, just a podcast doing some stuff and that was I, like i i i credit the the exposure of graham hancock as well as uh, uh like joe rogan for playing a you know a very big part in terms of you know, doing the advertising necessary to get the eyes and ears on the podcast so people would tune in, learn exactly what was going on, and, you know, do their part and, and open up their wallets and give to the man's treatment. You know, and that promotion and, and being involved in, in, you know, in something that was so out of touch <laughs> compared to what I'm used to. I'm not used to people listening to me. I'm not used to people taking me seriously, you know, in, in that way. And it's like you, you end up in this situ this, this extraordinary, you know, situation where all you're just like, I just want to, you know, do my part and raise my hand and say like, okay, man, I'm in. Like if, if you need something, you need anything like, you know, light, many hands make light work. That's, that's the way that that's one of the, the, the Freemason, no, well, that's not a Freemason motto, but it's just a motto in general. But the the idea that everyone works in harmony together to to attain a certain goal is kind of big for me. So to to see that, you know, tells a lot about John Anthony West in terms of the people that he keeps around him. And when you've got people like Graham Hancock and and Joe Rogan who are giving as much of their time and exposure and you know their own their own image and perception to, I'm under no illusions that even myself that a podcast of my size, you know, like we're there was a, definitely a boost with that but you know i'm i'm not going like it's the the added like that that's the um like that's just the effect from it you know you you do good things or you do something that that's get gets a lot of notice and people are going to take notice but you know it, truth be told the same time as this time as the last time it all just came down to okay you know some like a guy needs help somebody that i know or at least know of who's affected a lot of people's lives and it's like if you can help you help if you can do something you got a skill you bring that skill to the forefront you know, you get the gold. You don't worry about egos. You don't worry about what, um, you know, what other people's perceptions are. All you do is just you help it where you can to make sure the job can get done. And, you know, this is something that I've learned from Graham Hancock. This is something that I've learned from John Anthony West. This is something that I've learned from Dr. Robert Schock, from from Robert Baval, from Gary A. David, from Randall Carlson, from, you know, for, from Laird Scranton, uh, from, from Edward Nightingale. You know, these are good honest people whom inspire the hell out of me just by the fact that they're just good honest people at the end of the day just like everyone else and it's the same way that people should act to one another and if we all did act with one another the same way as they act towards each other and they act towards people like me who you know if i if, I, if it was just me coming up to them two years ago i'd just be like some fan who's just like okay i just want a picture with you know you know, I just am expecting a picture with so-and-so because I think they're cool. But now they're like, okay, well, you're, you're a radio personality. You're here for a purpose. You've done something. I'm like, you can't help but learn and you can't help but take that example and, and try and emulate that because you're like, okay, these people are the way that I think people should act. And I want to be like that because I think that's good. And that's that's being a role model. And, you know, like Graham Hancock or Baval, all of those guys – they're all like to me they're all role models and have been since i was very young um and that leads on to john's health and kind of the situation that led from the podcast like around the time of the first podcast till till now and why it's so important that people do support and do if like again if everyone can give a buck if everyone can give it two dollars we're trying to raise raise fifty thousand dollars with this latest effort you know then if everyone is able to give a dollar or two and we reach fifty thousand ears then every single person would be directly responsible in helping you know a, a man who's been doing what he's been doing for for decades back home so we can get better with his family and in a place that he knows and that he enjoys which you know it's kind of the best you can hope for with the you know the the symposium that we had on saturday like originally we had had uh, graham hancock who had bit was was scheduled to make it a, a special appearance uh unfortunately I, I know graham's been been under the weather he's he's an absolute workhorse like that man is one of the most driven and hardworking people i've ever had the pleasure of uh <laughs> ever ever had the pleasure of talking to or even just exchanging an email with you know it's like you get an email from graham hancock you're like holy shit i got an email from graham hancock and i, I know that he's been under the weather recently and you know with the extreme amount of time that uh, that everyone had put into making 
this past Saturday happened and Cameron, you know, he's <laughs> stayed up just as long as I did, you know, when it came to that, you know, Venice, she was amazing and, you know, just came down to, well, I had some stuff in my own family that I had to take care of suddenly that just kind of popped out of nowhere. And, um, you know, that, that day of was, okay, well, I've got five or six monitors in front of me. I've got 10 different messages popping up in 10, 10 different social media platforms. It had been the biggest show I'd, I'd ever done and probably ever will do. And, you know, when I'd learned that, that Graham just was not feeling well and probably would not be able to make it it's 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 unfortunate but i'm like okay well you know you, you have to like the, the man the man's been doing what he can for as long as he has and he's, he's supporting us as long as he has what are you gonna do i did the only thing that i could do in my position that i can think of at the time which primarily was to try and stay awake and make it to the end of the program without making a complete, complete ass of myself <laughs> or or falling off my chair going oh my god i've got you know like uh, laird scranton gary a david Randall Carlson, myself, Jimmy Church, and uh, Aaron Cheek uh, on screens all around me, and I'm like the guy in a tank top and a pith helmet, which I've got right here. <laughs> it stays by my desk all for every single show. I actually got it when I was uh, a teenager after watching uh, Mystery of the Sphinx. Maybe I'm get it for cool, me. Yeah. And I'm like wearing it. I'm just like I feel so out of place. Like oh my god, I I don't I, I haven't had stage fright in a very long time, and that was just like okay, you got to keep it together. And the only thing for me was making sure we can get there. And I think I may have mentioned somewhere in the broadcast that like after after I'd learned, and I'm 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 trying to remember, but everything just kind of happened so fast. I I pretty sure that I'd said well okay, this is the situation, and I'd hoped that you know people would be able to understand. And I thought that the fact that nobody had said anything negative about him not being there understandably that everything was fine it's it's regrettable it's it's like man you, you can you can only work so hard and you, you can only go so long until you just need a little bit of rest and you know at, at the end of the day it's like you could say okay well are you, you know, like are you okay you're well you know everything's everything's fine to, at least to my knowledge it's just it's it's one of those um you know, it's just one of those things so you know graham if you're out there man i'm i'm very glad that you're doing you know, a little bit better than you were on Saturday, and uh, that's uh, thank you very much for all your support. I hate to burst your bubble, but I don't think Graham Hancock is going to hear this. <laughs> you know, man, crazy things have happened. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I don't think Graham knows knows of me or my show. So, hey, if he hears it, cool. If he doesn't, you know, oh well. And the, the the main the reason I'm asking you, and the reason I've asked you for your help, is because I'm like, okay, well, you need to get eyes and ears on here. You're like. Believe it or not, probably a little more respect in the esoteric circles than I am at this point. Whoa, 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 whoa. I don't mean to cut you off there, but let's let's not tell lies. But uh, hey, I, I think people would be interested in how John has chosen to fight his cancer. What can you tell us about how he's going about that? John didn't want to do chemotherapy. Uh, he did not want to put that radiation into his body knowing that he was at an age where it could probably kill him. And even at for any doctor that you talk to and they say, okay, well, if you're at that age, they're, you know, they're not going to, you, I won't say it for everyone, but a lot of them will not necessarily recommend it or suggest it. So he, uh, Clay, the family, family friend who is, um, uh, who had been helping and researching nonstop to try and see what he can do for this man. You know, he, he found the Brzezinski Clinic in Houston, and they booked him into the Brzezinski Clinic, and um, or at least they went to go went down to Houston to go see him. They said, okay, he said, Dr. Brzezinski, you, you can search him on Google. He has a, an alternative um, method for treating uh, cancer that is outside of, well, out, outside the norms of standard pra practices of medicine, at least as far as, like, chemotherapy is concerned. So I said, okay, well, you know, normally we don't do this, uh, this type of advanced um, stage, but you know, he thought there'd be some promise and he thought that he could, that he could actually, that, that he'd be able to make a recovery, at least be able to see some progress. And so we got the entire, um, first telethon in February organized in about a, 10 days, I think. Uh, and we ended up getting like, uh, Graham Hancock, Randall Carlson, whom is, again is, is the, the mentor to Cameron. Uh, and again, for, for those two, any, anytime they're on the Joe Rogan experience and, and the fact that they have connections with, with, with Joe Rogan in terms of that type of exposure, it gets a lot of buzz. And we've had long time, we had longtime friends of um, uh, John, uh, Dr. Robert Schock from Boston University. We had Laird Scranton uh, as well as uh, a relatively newcomer to the alternative history field, uh, Edward Nightingale. And I believe that was it for that telethon. Uh, we were going to have Scotty Roberts on for that first one. And... 
uh, fortunately, believe it or not, like a, a week before the telethon, Scotty had a, m- a major heart attack. So <laughs> we ended up uh, uh, con- uh, contracting Ed. So we had our we had the telethon. The first one, you know, it had never been done to this extent before. This I, I think even as far as podcasts are concerned, I don't I don't think anybody had attempted that. We were originally going to do five hours. We ended up going eight almost nine until uh, I think we stopped at like five o'clock in the morning. And that weekend, like th- th- that night, I think we raised around 15,000. And for the end, by the end of the weekend, I think we raised close to 25 uh, of a hundred of a total $155,000 total. Uh, that's including the treatment, um, you know, for as well as the stay that's uh, down there in Houston. In addition to um, uh, travel back from Houston to New York, that was kind of the overall total goal. And that's including medication. That's including at home uh, assistance, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. It's a lot of money. This stuff is not covered under Medicare or or uh, Medicaid or even insurance uh, because it is it's so radical. But Dr. Brzezinski has been been making miraculous cures for the last goodness knows how long since since he's been around. And mainstream medicine hates him for it because he's like, okay, well I actually can do something, and you're you know putting <laughs> essentially poison radiation into people's bodies with. This telethon that we just did, which we, we called the, 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 the Jaws Symposium, we were trying to raise that last $50,000 because uh, John's treatment had been going so well. Uh, he'd been in an induced coma for two months. And, you know, if, once he came out of his coma, he had been in a ventilator, you know, again, pr- pretty well on on uh, knocking at, uh, at, that, at that door or at the pearly gates. And within a couple of weeks of being out of that medically induced coma, uh, they'd seen a 59% reduction of uh, ca- cancer in his brain. Uh, he had gone from not being able to, like, again, being in a coma to walking several hundred uh, feet a day, practically unassisted, again, with a walker um, or a cane, biking several miles on a uh, on a bike uh, on a stationary bike. And, you know, he's he's off his ventilator, except at night times at this point, uh, just because, you know, he, he's still ki- trying to kick the pneumonia. And it, probably the most inspiring thing is, well, at the point in time where his health was maybe not maybe not necessarily the best, and he needed help by several people, by you know, to be able to get in and out of bed because he'd been fighting the cancer for so long. Now he can get in and out of bed only with the help of his wife, which is, you know, absolutely phenomenal. It, it, it's it's a very large meteoric rise from from where he was and, and having that worry to the point where okay, this you know, let's let's keep going, let's let's keep battling. You don't give up the fight. He, he didn't give up the fight against uh, academia or or you know standard forms of research when it came to dating the Sphinx. I very much doubt he'd you know he's going to give up this fight. And we we're trying to uh, uh, we're helping Clay, uh, Sacred Geometry, and myself as well as Fate to Black to keep the spotlight on his fight to be able to make sure that people realize that this is something that is not over. It is a long road, and that. There are we still need to be able to hit that goal. Uh, he's at the point now where he is getting better day by day, and at some point he has to leave the cl- the treatment clinic where he is be- because it's not a hospital or a long stay facility. It's a clinic. It's it's a temporary, uh, you know, a, a temporary place to to recover one's health, and he has to be able to continue his treatment back at home and make that trip, which is essentially you know either requires being medically you know medically assisted or medically monitored by either like a, a you know, a either by a nurse or some type of medical professional who can at least make sure that he's okay and he's comfortable and it's you know if there's anything that happens that he can be taken care of. Again, this is these are things that are not not covered under insurance that are not covered under uh, Medicare or Medicaid because of uh, the facility that he was at. In addition to that, because he was in Houston and he was on uh, he was on Medicare in Houston, uh, the way that in, uh, you, you're you're American, then you know that you can't be on Medicare in two states at the same time, which is something I learned recently. I actually didn't know that. So well, thanks, he, thanks for the info. Can't be on Medicare in, in two in in two states. So if he's on Medicare in in Texas right now and he travels back home to New York, they could start the paperwork and start the process in New York, but they can't actually execute anything until he is you know feet down in the state. So there is no absolute date. Like this is something that's unknown. We don't know how long, and his family, and I should say we, his family, and 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 myself, because I'm I'm getting information from them to be able to help in descriptions for for this type of um, you know this type of communication. They don't they don't know how long if you know he could be off or in between Medicare, which goodness knows if, if that can you know how, how much that would cost or how long that could be it could be a couple of days it could be a couple of weeks um 
and at least thankfully they have several options for for treatment facilities or at least for places that can ensure that there is that people who do live with somebody who is recovering from this type of uh, this type of battle that you know they can they're fully trained to be able to that th- these places can take care of training the family members uh, in terms of what to do in terms of how the equipment works and and you know if if there is a, a, vent- a ventilator how to be able to turn that on and you know everything that needs to be done with that so there is there is a uh, a facility uh, within range of their of their their house that can do this but again the entire purpose of us getting to this point was to make sure that he can get home and to make sure he can, he can be taken care of. So I'm trying to at least assist as much as I can in getting the word out to as many people as possible to be able to, to, to let people know that, you know, one of the greatest minds for alternative history and probably one of the most influential people, even though most people may not necessarily understand it or, or see it, but one of the most influential people in terms of media, in terms of research, in terms of history or archaeology in the late 20th century, early 21st century is, is still battling. And there are still people that I run into on Facebook or Twitter or on YouTube comments who don't know that he had even had cancer or you know, don't know that that he'd been fighting. He was originally supposed to do a tour of Egypt in March, and uh, his best friend and you know of of thirty some years, uh, Doctor Robert Schock, uh, who is one of the again one of, one of the nicest people you'll ever meet in your entire life, one of the hardest working, one of the most intelligent people, and also a an absolute certified badass <laughs> when it comes to <laughs> what he does. Doctor Robert Schock actually said, okay, you know, he went to the family and said, okay, I'm going to. I'm going to take over John's tour and so that the people who, you know, so that, that, that income that was supposed to come to the family is is still going to be able to come to the family. And, you know, that, that's the type of people that John Anthony West has in his life. Every single individual that I've met who knows him, who calls him a friend, who has been a colleague of his, has, has done co-research or been inspired by his research and gotten to know him. Um, they're all some of the most incredibly dedicated and loyal people to John Anthony West and just their character in general is beyond reproach. Like even even for myself uh, as a Freemason, I know a lot of good men, and I, I, I take a look at, at the the men and women who uh, John surrounded himself with for the last untold number of years. And the, these are all people that you know you look at them and you're inspired and go like, oh, shit, that's how I should be living my life in terms of treating other people. Because well, that's the way. If we all did that, the world would be a much better place, It'd be a much more compassionate place. Uh, which goes to towards the, you know, go, goes towards John Anthony West being an inspiring figure in addition to, well, one of, <laughs> this is a show about occult practices and, and, and magic and, uh, you know, a lot of symbolism and that positive intention, that, that positive ability to, to manifest something constructive in, in the world from one's mind is, you know, it, uh, it's all based on intent. And if your intent is good and pure, then, you know, the magic will work. And for for John, yeah, it, it, it does because he's he's touched so many lives in so, in such a positive fashion. And you know, for this Fundly campaign, again, you still have your medical expenses, you still have your transportation from the hospital or from the airport to the facility where he'd be staying temporarily, and then back home or just back home. And then you have your equipment, you have you know the in between Medicaid fees, you have the medication. You know, there's uh, he's on uh, now on a ketogenic diet, which uh, was uh, designed by uh, Clay Roop through his own research to keep the pH levels down, to take um, the acidity out of, uh, you know, out of uh, the body, which, you know, essentially helps, like, if, if, you're, if your body is, or if your blood is acidic, then that can help cancer grow. That's, it's fuel. Uh, that and sugar, uh, especially refined sugar. So in terms of, like, whole foods, real foods, more, you know, raw foods with good protein, that's all part of you know part and parcel with with getting him back on his feet uh and that it doesn't even include the the you know any expenses that, that his family has incurred from the last eight months uh having to stay in houston uh and it, and having to travel back and forth between houston and, and new york to be able to to see him to be able to take care of business or or other matters so we're, we're, we're trying to be able to make sure that it's not it's not just for to be able to make sure that john is going to survive but also that you know he's not going to be completely you know that the battle <laughs> is is not uh, not for you know you win the battle you lose the war type of thing you know it's like the, the financial burden and doesn't become so large as a result that you know it it's it it's not going to hit him as you know he can at least enjoy the time that he has and the, that he's that he's earned from that fight so yeah like if if every single person searching in google go fundly.com or like just search fundly john anthony west uh you can get it at the 
Dental Lore uh, website. We, I think most of the posts are there in, in the news still. It's, and obviously, uh, for this, uh, the, for the JAW Symposium, for this telethon that we did, which, believe it or not, we did 12 hours. It was insane. It's, it's sacredgeometryinternational.com forward slash JAWS Symposium. J-A-W Symposium. All the information is there. All of the perks are there. So if you do donate something, uh, we actually do have donation levels that you get something in return. And this is uh, something from, you know, whether it's from myself, uh, that are, it's either donating time or services to, you know, Sacred Geometry International is donating downloads of uh, patterns of evidence. Um, Fade to Black is um, uh, donated. Well, Jimmy Church is giving shout outs on, on international radio for like 50 bucks a pop, which is hilariously awesome. And it's like, yeah, like, but it, at the same time, you know, even for myself, like if, if the perks are what you need to be able to give, the perks are, are a thank you. But even if you just give a buck, or two bucks, which is like a cup of coffee, or you know a croissant, or a bagel, or a muffin in the morning. I don't know if, if Americans really do the whole muffin thing. It's kind of big here in Canada. One one dollar, two dollars. We'd have this thing blown out of the water by by the end of the month. And the whole idea is to get him home by August first if he's well enough, because John wants to go back to Egypt. He wants to go back December 9th. That was the original date I was told. And I think it'd be absolutely amazing and inspiring and wonderful to make sure that he can get back there and lead that tour for everybody and to be able to, to show, like, not only to to be able to see, you know, the, the country, be able to see the country and the monuments that he missed the last time and to be able to, to, to miss that experience from the last time because of the, afflic- uh, the, the afflicted disease that he was battling, but also be able to tell all the people who didn't give much of a chance, it's like, well, you know, screw you, I'm, uh, I'm still kicking it and I'm still raising hell and... You can't get rid of me that easy. And, um, you know, I think that would be one of the most amazing things that could transpire. Well, I think the uh, the thing here inside the muffin is the Starbucks Frappuccino, which runs you anywhere from like 4 to $6. So you skip that for the day, which, by the way, that's the kind of shit that gives you cancer. So skip that for one day, send it over to the Jaw Symposium Fund, and help a, uh, what'd you call him earlier? No, well, you called Shock a badass, but... Help another badass finish his work because he's got a lot of work left to do, right, Chris? No, he does. Um, I, like even I know that he has several books that he has like he's written because like, John is a, an author and as great as he is as as a, just a, a general personality, you know he he's a playwright, he's an author, and he's he's got books and information and knowledge written down that has not been released. You know he has uh, stories to be able to tell that he hasn't told anybody and. You know, yeah, like he he has some work to he's got some work to do. He's he's not finished. You know, this this world is not ready for a world without John Anthony West in it. And because well, that would be a really much darker world, I think. I would tend to agree with you, man. He's had such an impact on well, for lack of a better term, old culture. You know, I mean, just this sort of hidden lost history. You know, he was the guy who started it. Well, he he didn't really start. Like Schwaller technically was the you know the, the 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 progenitor of the looking at Egypt Egypt symbolism in a in a different light compared to the way that standard Egyptology had been been looking at it. And John Anthony West was a student of Schwaller. He's the one that actually translated Temple of Man into English. So you look at the work that he's done, and you look at that attacking the the date the sta- standard standard accepted date of the Sphinx and how it actually arrived at its current uh, state of disrepair had never really been done or tried before in a mainstream fashion. And when that actually hit, that changed everything. You know, there was ufology was around, and you had Rubber Von Daniken with with, um, Chariots of the Gods. But in terms of the large picture where we came from as a history in, and again, Von Daniken, I, I do apologize, and again, nothing against Sitchin. In terms of actual, tangible research that, can be looked at from many different ways and it's very difficult to be able to dispute because of the background of John Anthony West who learned from Schwaller and the fact that the language and the symbolism of Egypt itself is inherently metaphorical it's different that that, that is considerably different than going to the ancient alien or like the straight ancient alien answer as it were and even though that is a possibility that core concept of we have been fed a either a lie or they just don't care or want to change their views because they're just thick-headed or they are stubborn or they're egotistical is completely different than this is something that happened 120,000 years ago or or what have you and you know there there were beings from another planet here this is somebody saying this is our history this is something we made this is something that was done 
at a time when we were told nothing existed except for people throwing sticks at one another in you know in 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 the jungle or on you know on the Sahara Desert or the, or or wherever there were humans at the time and nobody had really done that before nobody had done that to an extent that changed everyone's perspective because from what i can understand everything kind of leads back to egypt when you're talking about ancient history when you're talking about you know religion writing and i go yes sumer will have the note of complex civilization but you know what sumer did gradually become the way that it was before it fell egypt sprang into nothing and nobody knows why and this is the start of the answer like this is not even the answer it's just the start of a question or starting to a the start of the path to ask the questions to find out why and that's what he set us on and that is what has led to everything it's led to your show it's led to my show it's led to fade to black it's led to untold number of of ancient history podcasts or occult focused podcasts because even though it was around as i said everything kind of leads back to egypt and all the answers can can be found there for a lot of stuff and nobody had been looking at that before schwaller and, and john anthony west really it's funny and ironic in a way i'm standing here uh, next to my bookshelf and i have three books here right by my left hand i have alchemy i have symbol in the symbolic and then i have serpent in the sky so i'm just my hand is resting on this pile of three books and they're always here they've been here for months maybe a year i've just had them stacked here and uh it's just yeah it's just interesting that we're sitting here now talking about the guys who wrote these books and their impact on your show, my show, and every show like it. And I do have to tell you, man, it's the first time I've spoken to you. I've listened to your show uh, for a few months now. I'm really impressed with what you're doing. I really admire what you're doing as well. More people like you need to be active in this space. So kudos to you. Kudos to the whole Denivore community. Fate to Black. Grimerica has been talking about this. I've heard Greg mention it on THC, so it's really exciting to see a lot of people rallying around a guy who's been so impactful, like I said, on all these different people and all these different projects, so keep doing that, man. When it came to this, I'm, I'm only just a small player in this. Like, I'm, I'm, I don't even know what the heck you, you know, you would call me. I'm not the front, like, if, if I'm the loudmouth, the obnoxious one who's willing to, to push this thing, you know, that's, that's yeah, great. If I'm annoying the he- heck out of you, I'm still going to keep doing it because it's what I believe in. But I sure as hell wouldn't have gotten to this point if it weren't for Clay Roop. It won't. It's his campaign. And I know that for him, he's been traveling all over the, all over the country, you know, on a pretty well constant basis to be with John, to, to get things for him to that are going to be used for his treatments to research uh he adopted a a um, a therapy dog which is actually from the breed that john introduced to abitza back in like the 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 late 60s early 70s and the one that he adopted or the clay adopted for john is actually like the great 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 grandson i forget how many generations of the dog that john actually brought brought back from abitza when he moved to the states but like cameron wiltshire astromunk he's been absolutely essential to this entire thing uh he's the one that made the introduction between me and clay he's the one that has been the material support he's the one that's been the inspiration he's been my my lockstep partner in helping clay out as best we can to make sure that the three of us can help john along with working with his family and, and helping his family um and again fade to black jimmy church he has more ears uh, on him than anybody else and he's been so absolutely generous in terms of lending airtime and you know being part of the broadcasts and helping advertise and helping get his followers eyes the fader knots which you know i am one i've been have been since day one onto the program and you know even if i'm the guy the, talking at the microphone if it weren't for all of us, if it weren't for everybody working together, if it weren't for all of us with one common goal, uniting and saying, this is what we're going to do and this is what we're going to accomplish, we may not have gone to this point. And that has to be recognized. It has to be known. Because I'm, I'm just the, like, again, right now I'm just the annoying guy behind the microphone with the voice and drinking scotch. But, you know, I'm, I'm just one small player in this entire massive thing. And, you know, it's it, it's it's a team. It's a team effort. It, it Everyone has to pull together it's the same thing i'm asking everyone else out there all you gotta do is just donate a buck or two and if everyone did that like reach in go 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 like go go in your couch if you can find 50 60 cents in one uh, side of it and 50 60 cents on the other and you send that in to the fundly if everyone did that this would be gone you know as quickly as possible and 
you know, we wouldn't, we wouldn't have to worry. He'd be just be able to, to get better and spend that time getting better. Absolutely, man. That's really what it's all about. And Chris, I have to say, I really appreciate you reaching out and asking to be on Oculture here. It really means a lot to me, mostly because I've not been involved in any of this to this point. But regardless, I'm honored to you know have just been asked to share this information with the audience here. Brother, I, I appreciate you helping me out here. I appreciate you helping with the whole John Anthony West. Again, I'm just trying to get the word out as much as possible. Like that's, Absolutely, that's the whole man. Thing. As yeah, many yeah. ears on his fight as possible. I hear you, and I, I respect the how to you for doing that, and I, I respect the how to John and all that he's done as well, too. So it's nice to just... It'll be nice to type his name into some show notes. You know what I mean? Like, that's... That's one of those things, like, when I started this, I was like... I made a list of, like, who I would absolutely, like, want to talk to before it was too late. And this was before, you know, John was diagnosed, obviously. But he was... I don't know if he was at the top, but he was near the top. He was in, like, the top three or five guys where I was like, I would love to talk to John for a couple of hours. Just, just pick his brain on everything. Because I really... You know, I mentioned the... Um, the two books on Schwaller that I have sitting here, and I haven't read them in a couple of years, but I could probably talk to him for two hours just about Schwaller's work, just forgetting everything that John's done in his own life, but we could deep dive Schwaller, and I'd be happy with that. Please do give out the web address for people. I know you mentioned it before, but please do give it out again here for people if they're interested in learning more about this. SacredGeometryInternational.com forward slash J-A-W symposium. Or just go check out, just go check out the Fundly. Google it, Fundly.com, or just Fundly, John Anthony West. Hell yeah, man. Awesome. Thanks so much for being here and doing this and hanging out for a few minutes. Thank you very much, and I'll touch base with you tomorrow. All right. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. All right. Thanks again to Chris for reaching out to me to do this. You know, like you said, if you got a dollar or two just sitting around, head over to that Fundly, drop it on there, or... If you really want to do a little more, you know, go buy some of John's books. Go pick up some of the Magical Egypt DVDs, you know. There's plenty of other options out there if you want to contribute more than a dollar or two. You know, this is where you can really make a difference by voting with your dollar. Spending it to help people who have spent a lot of their time and their money raging against this machine that we all are part of. Anything you can do to help get John a little more time here is appreciated, believe me. Because those of us who are familiar with his work, who know him personally, who have spent time with him personally, we don't want his time to be gone. We understand at some point it will be, but for now... Like we said, plenty of work left to do. Cancer is defeatable. It's curable. So let's rally around this guy so he can continue and finish his career the way that he started it by shoving his great sphinx right up the asses of all those quackademics, all those prostitutes, that church of progress, everyone who's still living in dumb fuckistan. Anyway... I'll be back in the next few days with another full episode of O'Culture. Until then, though, I am Ryan Peverly, reminding you to love yourself, think for yourself, and question authority.